People's behaviors are lines of what they've been made to believe. Therefore, the white society keeps us believing lies that keeps us mentally enslaved. If you actually believe that what controls the minds of black people is the Willie Lynch myth, then you're more than still asleep. You're within a friggin' coma. You can choose to continue believing in a silly slave syndrome myth and then go from your cradles to your graves, having lived your entire lives being mentally enslaved by the white society, therefore having been their fools. Or you can choose to learn the truth and then experience a life wherein which your mind is truly yours. Because they've socialized us to pursue religions rather to be critical thinkers, we are therefore easily mentally enslaved. While we black people studied our Bibles and our Qurans, white oppressive forces studied instead how to control the group minds of large targeted populations through their monopoly over information that are fed into the collective minds of those targeted populations. Our studies limited to religions have left many of us, many of our people fall behind intellectually to understand the sophisticated method of mind control that is presently being used against us. Therefore, we are easy victims for those who knows how the mind works and how to mentally enslave it. When it is gradually done down generational lines, millions of people can be brainwashed to believe things and to engage in behaviors that literally insults their own intelligence. They can therefore be made to normalize the abnormal to justify the unjustifiable, to believe the unbelievable, and be made to defend the undefensible. And once the process has been completed, these mentally enslaved people will then make enemies of anyone who intelligently presents factual reasons why those behaviors and beliefs makes no sense at all. These people have been conditioned to act as wardens of their own mental prisons. Once false, ridiculous beliefs have been successfully embedded into these people's minds, some cannot change their minds, even if you expose them to authentic information. Even if you prove that what they believe is absolutely ridiculous, you still cannot change their mindsets and illogical behaviors. Therefore, trying to free these mentally enslaved people, some of them, can be literally as difficult as trying to feed medicine to the dead. To our own detriment, this is precisely what white social engineering scientists have done to millions of African Americans. It's why millions now justify self-identifying ourselves by the N-words, although it's in fact unjustifiable. It's why millions now insist that we're our worst enemies and that we should try to be more like Caucasians in spite of such a brutally horrific history of the contrary. It's why millions now insist that a Bible written by the most ungodliest group of people we've ever encountered contains the true words of God. And it's also why millions insist that a Bible brutally beaten into the blood-soaked minds of our enslaved ancestors will now set us free. These noted beliefs makes no sense whatsoever. And it literally insults our own intelligence. The reason why millions of black people defend these noted asinine beliefs is because black people have been brainwashed to act as wardens of our own mental prison. This is all possible because regardless of how intelligent people are, if it's possible to control the input of information that are fed into their collective minds, it's entirely possible to control what they'll believe and how they'll think. The white society exploits their monopoly over information that black people receives to indoctrinate mental enslaving beliefs into the minds of black people. Those of us who tell you the truth are trying to free you from a mental prison that you don't even know you're trapped within. And the most difficult prison to escape is a prison for the mind. This was achieved by deploying an ideological subversion system 
against the African-American population. Ideological subversion is an offensive psychological warfare propaganda tactic that uses disinformation, misinformation, and unrelenting um, propaganda campaigns to change a targeted population in ways that are against their own interests and instead in ways serving those who are deploying the ideological subversion system. What it basically does is spread so much disinformation into the black communities until virtually everything believed by the black population are lies that hinders our liberation. It confuses the black community to such an extent that despite the abundance of available information, no one is able to come to any sensible conclusion in the interest of defending our communities, our de defending our families, and liberating ourselves. The ultimate goal is the complete collapse of the black population. Ideological subversion is the process which is legitimate, it is overt, and it's an open. You can see it with your own eyes. All you have to do is start critically thinking. It's an elaborate brainwashing process which goes very gradual and is divided into five basic stages. The five stages of ideological subversion, the first one is demoralization, the second one is destabilization, the third one is crisis, the fourth one is negative, negative stare, and the fifth one is normalization. Now I'm going to briefly explain these five stages. Number one, demoralization. Whenever those in power wants to control the behaviors and mindset of a targeted population, the first thing they do is heavily demoralize them. People are easily controlled by the information that they routinely receive about themselves. Receiving positive affirming information unifies and uplifts the people. It can even give them the confidence they need to stand up against their oppressors. However, to the contrary, whenever people are constantly inundated with negative demoralizing information about themselves, this causes the exact opposite effect to happen. This divides them, demoralizes them. It creates self-loathing and makes them self-doubting and it causes them to lose confidence within themselves and with their, within their own ability to come together against their oppressors. Therefore, it makes them more compliant with their oppressors' dominance over their lives. It's a well-proven psychological warfare system that's often used for controlling the oppressed. Throughout Western history, those empires that maintain their dominance over the oppressed have always done so by heavily demoralizing them. Therefore, the oppressed population's perception of themselves and of their reality is never truly and never a true one. They're always false demoralizing perception management system a, that, that has been indoctrinated into their minds without them even realizing it. This makes them much more easier to control. Today, this heinous tradition and practice still continues in regards to black people living under white dominance. The second phase is the stabilization. They create unfair laws designed to mass incarcerate millions of black fathers, removing them from our homes. They also created financial assistance programs that stipulates that it requires that the father remain, has to remain out of the home in order for the mother to receive benefits. This destabilized the black family. The third thing is crisis. They constantly tell us that we're within a state of crisis to convey the belief within our subconscious mind that we therefore need whites to govern over our lives. That's what I always tell us with some type of crisis. Then four, negative media social engineering. A group's identity is shaped by how they see themselves repeatedly depicted within the media. People often become those derogatory media depictions of themselves that they've accepted as being their true reality. Therefore, those who control people's media images are able to steer their culture because what oppressive force controls our media images, this allows them to negatively steer our culture. And this is what they did to us, why we call ourselves by the N-word and so on. Then there's the final phase is normalization. The black population then normalize what has been done to them, their culture. And now they're stuck in the situation. Through this process, your perception of reality is an elaborate white deception. We interpret and we understand reality based upon information and media images 
presented by the white society. Because they own the interpretation of reality, they've exploited this immense position of power by feeding us mental enslaving lies and distorted images into our collective minds. Don't be fooled. If they were truly superior, they wouldn't have to tell so many lies to convey it, nor would they have to work this hard to handicap those whom they claim are inferior. It is time to wake up to our reality. The time of believing in dumb shit is over. One love and peace.